Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to be looking at aerobic respiration. Our objectives for this lesson are to recall the word and symbol equations for respiration and you need to be able to explain what respiration is, where it occurs and why it is important. Um, what I want you to do is write down the title, the date and the objectives and then complete the quick task. So you should be able to remember from your reactivity and reactions topic in a chemical equation where what are the products and what are the reactants and what does the error show. So pause the video here, title, date and objectives and complete the quick task. Okay, here's the answer to the quick task. So the reactants are the chemicals you start with before a reaction. So before a chemical reaction takes place, you start off with reactants. The example I've put at the bottom of this screen are, um, these are your reactants here, it's an example of a cake. So if you've got flour, sugar, eggs and butter, that's what you're starting off with. The products are the chemicals that you get at the end of a, of a reaction. So in this example that I've given you, the product is a cake. And the other part of the quick task was what does the arrow show? Well, the arrow shows a chemical reaction taking place. OK, so you take all these ingredients, you take your reactants, you mix them up, you heat them in the oven. So heating them in the oven is the chemical reaction taking place. And then at the end, your product would be the cake. If you don't remember that, make sure you go back to the reactivity topic that we did and make sure you've done some revision on that. OK, you should definitely know what the photosynthesis equation is. You should have done it in year seven. Um, pause the video here. Write down the photosynthesis equation. If you need to look back in your books or use a textbook to help you, that's OK, too. Here is your answer. The um, reactants that plants use are carbon dioxide from the atmosphere that goes into their leaves through tiny holes on the bottom called stoma and um, water is the other reactant and water goes into the plant up through the roots. A chemical reaction happens and that chemical reaction is photosynthesis so sunlight is the energy the form of energy that's needed for this um, reaction to happen. The products the things that we're left with are glucose which is what the plant needs in order to it's for to be it's like food energy and oxygen, which leave the trees or plants or whatever through the holes on the undersides of the leaf. So why have I talked about the photosynthesis equation when we're doing respiration today? Well, the reason is, is that photosynthesis and respiration are basically the same things, but backwards. So what do you notice about the products and reactants of respiration, which is here? and photosynthesis, which is here. Well, with respiration, we start off with glucose and oxygen. And with photosynthesis, we end with glucose and oxygen. In respiration, we end with carbon dioxide and water. And in photosynthesis, we begin with carbon dioxide and water. So the products and the reactants are swapped around when you look at respiration and photosynthesis. Um, now, respiration is an exothermic reaction. So as a reaction takes place, energy is released and all living things respire using glucose and oxygen to release energy for life processes. And then the waste products are carbon dioxide and water. Photosynthesis is endothermic. Energy is taken into the reaction. So carbon dioxide and water is what you start off with as a plant. The plant takes in sunlight energy in order to make glucose and oxygen. I'm also just going to draw around here the symbol equation. So you need to know this, something that comes up in tests quite often. You need to know the balanced symbol equations. And you should have done a bit on balancing equations in your last topic. So we have one molecule of glucose, 6C6H12O6. We have six molecules of oxygen, O2. The chemical reaction happens of respiration. And the products are six molecules of carbon dioxide and six molecules of H2O. Now, it's a really easy one to remember. So you have to know C6H12O6. And then 
You rub the substances as six molecules of each, six molecules of oxygen, six molecules of carbon dioxide, six molecules of water. So you need to make sure that you remember that equation off by heart. So write, pause the video, write it down, and we'll move on to the next slide. So the next thing I would like you to think about is what do we actually use energy for? Have a look at these pictures and try to work out what energy is being used for in each picture. You can pause the video and talk about your answers if there's someone with you, or you can just have a think about it, or you can write some bullet points. Whatever you'd like to do is your choice. Okay, so here are the answers for some of the things we use energy for. So first of all, this is an infrared camera looking at a cat. And um, the different colours represent like which parts of the animal are hotter. So we can see that the cat's face is giving out a lot of heat because it's red. The rest of its body, like over here, you can see it's kind of blue, so there's not as much heat coming off. And that's because its fur will be keeping the warmth inside. So one of the things we use energy for is keeping ourselves warm. And that is in exoth and, um, exothermic animals, so like humans, uh, mammals and birds. Fish and lizards don't make their own warmth. Um, and also amphibians. Um, this image here is meant to kind of show cellular processes. So inside our bodies, the cells of our, our bodies are doing things all the time, making substances, chemical reactions are happening in our brains, nerves are firing off and sending signals to each other. So you need energy for cellular processes. In this image, we can see a bird flying, so it's meant to represent movement. Energy is used for movement. And lastly, this image is showing a peacock showing off his tail feathers to a female peahen, trying to impress her, show him he's very healthy and strong and that he would make a good mate and a good father for her children because he's got good DNA. That's what he's trying to do. So energy is also used for mating, whether that's the mating process or whether it's um, the female would need to invest a lot of energy in producing offspring and laying her eggs if it's a, a hen. Or, for example, if you think about pregnant people, they need to eat a little bit more food for the growing baby inside them. So those are the four main things we use energy for. What I would like you to do is write a sentence for each word below explaining how energy is used. So movement, reproduction, keeping warm and cellular activity. If you struggle with any of these, use the textbook to help you or use BBC Bite Size. So pause the video here and complete your full sentences. Okay, here's another thinking task for you. Which food here do you think would give you the most energy per 100 grams? So you've got 100 grams of chips, 100 grams of rice cakes, 100 grams of Lucozade, 100 grams of lettuce, and 100 grams of chocolate milkshake. Which would contain the most energy? So the answer, normally when you look at food packaging, you can see how many kilocalories or kilojoules are inside that um, food item. And you can compare similar amounts because normally it gives you per 100 mils or per 100 grams. So the food that contains the least energy would probably be the lettuce leaf because there's not much sugar or carbohydrate in it. Now, glucose, which is what we need for energy, which is what we need for respiration, comes from sugars and carbohydrates. Okay, So the lettuce leaf hardly contains any. Probably the rice cakes will be next. Now, rice cakes are very um, um, rich in carbohydrates, but they're also mostly popped air, so they're, they're very low calorie. Chips are very carbohydrate-y too. Now, why is glucosade called that? Well, imagine there's a G here. Glucosade, because it's got a load of glucose in it. But the thing is, it's also got a lot of caffeine as well. So glucosade, or glucosade, because it contains lots of glucose, is high in glucose. But believe it or not, the thing that contains the most calories per mil is, are these drinks here, the um, thick milkshakes. There's a lot of sugar, a lot of protein, a lot of fat in these drinks. And um, yeah, they're probably one of the highest calorie things you can have, especially I'm, I'm aware that the Mars one has tons of calories in it, loads of sugar loads of energy okay I would like you to pause the video here complete each sentence if you're not sure again refer to the textbook or use a website or use BBC Bite Size and complete these five sentences so pause the video complete sentences
Okay, so here are the answers. As I've already just mentioned, glucose gets into our body by eating sugars and carbohydrates and then we digest them. As you're already aware, oxygen gets into our bodies through breathing and gas exchange in the lungs. So oxygen from the air diffuses from the lungs into the bloodstream. When respiration occurs, energy is released. This means respiration is an exothermic reaction. Carbon dioxide leaves our bodies through breathing and gas exchange in the lungs. So this time, you know, before we say oxygen diffuses into the bloodstream from the lungs, carbon dioxide diffuses out of the blood into the lungs and then we breathe it out. And lastly, water leaves our bodies by exhaling. So if you breathe out onto a mirror, it goes steamy. Also by sweating and mostly by urinating. OK, so this is a diagram of a plant cell on the left here and an animal cell on the right. And the reason I've included these pictures today is because you need to learn about mitochondria. Now here it says mitochondrion because they've only labeled one. So the singular for mitochondria is mitochondrion. The plural is mitochondria. So mitochondria contain enzymes and that's where aerobic respiration happens. And what happens is the um, things that the cell needs, so glucose and oxygen, diffuse into the cell and into the mitochondria or this mitochondrion. A chemical reaction happens and energy is released and then the waste products, which are water and carbon dioxide, diffuse out of the cell again. Okay, so mitochondria are the site where aerobic respiration takes place. I would like you to write down these key notes in your books and fill the gaps in using the words at the bottom of the screen. So pause here and complete the task. And here are your answers. All living things respire. Aerobic respiration is the process by which our cells release energy by reacting glucose with oxygen. The waste products are carbon dioxide and water. Aerobic respiration happens in tiny structures called mitochondria inside our cells. Cells that need to release more energy, like muscle cells, have more mitochondria. OK, so I just want you to um, recall how substances move around the body. You would have done about this before. Um, so first of all, where do we get oxygen from? Well, we breathe air in through our lungs. OK, and this is an amazing drawing of a pair of lungs. OK, and when, when we breathe in, we breathe in air and the oxygen from the air diffuses into our bloodstream. So let's just draw a red line to represent the oxygenated blood coming from the lungs to the rest of the body and in our body we have lots of cells and all the cells in our body whether it's brain cells muscle cells um, cells surrounding the lining of your stomach the cells that make up the layers in your body like skin all of them are respiring and releasing energy and carrying out cellular processes okay the other thing that um, these cells need is um, glucose. Now, if I draw um, a picture of the uh, digestive system, so let's just pretend that this wiggly thing here is your small intestine. The blood also carries um, glucose from the small intestine and it picks up oxygen from the lungs and it carries those things to the cells. Okay. Now, when the cells respire, they take the oxygen and they take the glucose, they use those, and they also make some waste products they want the blood to take away again. The waste products they make are carbon dioxide and water. So next, let's have a little pair of kidneys. I'm going to draw them in green for no apparent reason. So here's a kidney, and here's a kidney. And now the blood is deoxygenated. Now, when blood is deoxygenated, it doesn't actually turn blue. It kind of turns a brownie ready color rather than a bright red color. But in textbooks, we just draw it as blue so that you can tell the difference between which blood has oxygen and which blood hasn't. So the blood is now moving towards the kidneys. OK, and the blood is carrying carbon dioxide and water. The water will be removed by the kidneys and the carbon dioxide will be removed by the lungs. OK, so how do substances move around the body? By the blood okay now there's one important thing you need to know about this okay about the blood right 
and I want you to draw this and write down the sentences. Now let's say this is me zooming in on one of the smallest um, blood vessels in our body, a capillary. Okay. Now, um, if you've ever seen, um, I don't know, like glittery nail varnish, imagine you've got some clear nail varnish and it's got red glitter in it. The clear liquid part is kind of like the plasma of our blood and the plasma of our blood is a liquid that the red blood cells and other blood cells float around in. So this yellow that I'm drawing here is meant to be a liquid, okay? And the red blood cells are suspended in this liquid. So, you know, if you prick your finger or if you hurt yourself, blood just looks like a red liquid, but actually it's a yellow liquid with little red bits floating in it. It's just that you can't see that with the naked eye. You'd have to look with a microscope. Okay, so the red blood cells are what carry oxygen. And the plasma here I should actually write this oxygen carried by red blood cells. The plasma is a liquid, the blood plasma is a liquid that substances can get dissolved in. So carbon dioxide is carried in the plasma. Water is carried in the plasma and glucose also is soluble, it dissolves and it's carried in the plasma. Okay, so oxygen is carried by the red blood cells, carbon dioxide, water and glucose carried by the plasma. So can you please draw this diagram in your books, label it up and make sure you've written those two sentences down. Okay, what I would like you to do finally is to write a short paragraph explaining what your key learning points from today's lessons were. If you need to start a sentence, I've put one there for you. Today, the most important things I learned about respiration were, and then you can list some of those things. Pause the video. To finish up, I'd like you to go back to your objectives and self-assess whether or not you can do these things by drawing a sad, smiley or middle face. So can you recall the word and symbol equation for respiration? If you 100% can do that, draw a smiley face. If you're not really sure, draw a middle face. If you definitely can't do it, draw a sad face. I want you to um, think about whether you can explain what respiration is, where it occurs and why it's important. Again, I want you to draw a smiley, middle or sad face to describe your confidence level on that. Once you've self-assessed yourself against these objectives, if there's anything you're underconfident about, you need to carry out some more revision. I would recommend using the Activate 2 book, which is um, on your caboodle, or you can use BBC Bite Size. There might be some other resources that you know about and um, that you like using. Again, just use what you feel happy or confident using to make sure you've understood this lesson fully. Thanks very much for your hard work today. Bye.